Awesome. So we got another student here uh, from WFA who's absolutely crushing it uh, in the same industry as us, which I absolutely love. Uh, and he's absolutely rocking these guys. So uh, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself and then we'll dive in. Hey, uh, Eric Haskin. Uh, I'm in South Carolina and uh, Charlotte, North Carolina, just on the border there. And so let's see. Um, I've been in WFA for almost two years now um, and kind of ups and downs because of my background. Um, but um, yeah, I just, that's me, Eric Haskin. Awesome. Awesome. So yeah, so I mean, you've been in WFA for two years uh, and I know you didn't start in personal injury. Which which market did you start in like the first the first bit when you were in WFA? Yeah, so that was part of the problem, I think, is, is I went in and I was just like, I'll do anything for anybody. I just want to <laughs> figure out how to make this work, right? Because I've, I've been in software, software development and the, the kind of agile framework and project managing those things and selling those things. So um, this was intriguing to me and I was like, I want something that's not so difficult to do, right? And mm -hmm. projects, software projects are just a pain to run because things break and there's glitches and you got to run those down and figure them out. And so I got into this to say, what, you know, but then when I got into it, I was like, I'll do anything for anybody. And goodness, yeah, I was, I had people in every niche. I had, uh, I've got, um, let's see, I started out as like massage therapist, financial advisor, um, a tree service company, um, oh, there's a hand commercial cleaning company, a computer repair guy in the town. And it was like, you can't effectively market that for everybody. Cause you have to learn what it's going to take for every single one. And so, because I was struggling with that, I had those clients and I was producing leads for them, but, um, I had this, you know, big software project come along and I just kind of said, I, can't do this and this. And so I, yeah. you know, anyway, that software project has come to a close. And then all of a sudden there's this sales challenge that popped up. What was like September of last year? Yeah. Yeah. It's been <clears> a good, and, like four, four or five months ago. Yeah. And uh, yeah. So, I mean, with that, like, I mean, so it's so obviously we ran that the whole idea of that for those who don't know is was really just to help folks drive more sales, you know, put some accountability, put them, put a little bit of fire under the butt, uh, you know, a little bit of that. Uh, so, I mean, when, it, when you saw the sales challenge, when you joined it, um, you know, what was like the reset and mindset that you were going in with? Was it just like, well, I'm, I'm just going to follow this thing and see what it does or? Uh, I think it was one of the first, well, I knew from previous experience that I was going to have to figure out a niche that I could work in mm -hmm. and just master that niche and, and spend, you know, 30, 60 days working that niche to figure it out, you know, fully so that I knew what I could, you know, I, I knew I could work with that one. And so I think that was the first thing, <clears throat> one of the um, videos or, or trainings or, or maybe it was even a call. I'm not sure what it was, but you were like, you know, you got to figure out which niche is for you. And there was a whole list of all these niches that work really easily. Right. So it was like, well, yeah. I've got a friend that is a personal injury attorney. And so I started picking his brain a little bit and to the point where he's like, dude, don't call me right now. <laughs> I'm, I'm busy with, with, a, you know, with, with legal stuff and depositions and plaintiffs and dealing with, you know, so I can't, you know, and so I was like, all right, sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, but anyway, he and I have got a good relationship anyway. So, um, I was able to kind of get some of that information and ask him some of those questions and learn a good bit. Uh, also, you know, just watching YouTube videos about, um, it, cause you know, attorneys have YouTube channels and so they're out there. And so you learn the lingo anyway. Um, so that's what, once I jumped into the sales challenge and picked that niche, I was able to kind of aim and focus on just that. And then, yeah from there, it's easy, right? From there, you just follow the, the prospecting and the process and set your mindset to, I'm going to do this same thing every day. And, you know, and it's from there, it's just, it, it seems monotonous, but yeah, the, the payoff, you know, four months later, you know, where I am today, you know, I'm at that point where I, you know, initially I was like, I, I need, I want to grow this part of the business to 10 to $15,000 a month. And now I'm there. So that's pretty cool. And, 
And uh, so I think you had some relative delay in getting that first client, almost the same as uh, as uh, as George, which we did uh, an interview with for the folks on the YouTube channel. We did an interview with them uh, a couple weeks ago. <clears throat> and I think you guys both had the same like delay in getting that first client going. Uh, I, I think at least it was what it was like near the end of the sales challenges when it kind of snowballed for you and you just the floodgates opened. Right. 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 And I don't know why that was for me other than maybe I didn't have my offer dialed in. Most likely it was, I didn't have my conversation and sales process down because I was, mm -hmm. you know, I was again trying to just take on anybody that would let me run their ads for them. And it, it, I think the mindset changed in that, Hey, I can do this whether you want to or not, right? Whether the client wants to or not, I'm, I can manage the, these ads and help them get more leads, uh, more yeah. prospects. But um, you know, once I basically said, I don't care whether or not you come, you, you know, as a client, if you come on board. And once that kind of I sh shifted my mindset to, I can do this. It's just, you know, whether they, they want to commit to it or not. So I almost 100%. said, to, you know, I don't say this to my, to my uh, salespeople or to, while I'm talking to my potential clients, but the, the attitude is they can say no. And that doesn't bother me at all, you know, because if they say no, then that's, they don't really want more prospects. They don't have the bandwidth and they don't want to take the time to get them. Right. So some of, some people are going to say no, so forget it. But if I get on, I've got this down. If I get on the phone with somebody and do a demo, 30% of the time I'm going to close. So if I talk to three people, I got one, right? Mm -hmm. So I just need to talk to three people a week. And that's just one more client every week. It's a, that's a big one to really nail down in your head is like the, I mean, a being okay with the no, there's so many folks that aren't okay with the no, but it's, I mean, it's a natural thing with sales with sales. You're going to get no's with, with anything you're going to get no's whether, whether yeah. it's the dating market or otherwise you're going to get no's at some point. <laughs> But knowing your numbers uh, in order to get that is also the other big one. Um, and with that, with that one in three, <clears> was that uh, was that something that just like after having calls you you dialed into, or was that something that that's something that's happened? Yeah, that I've figured out in the last six or eight weeks. Yeah, since the end of December. Now there was a there was a point there right at the end of the year um, where I talked to probably six people and I closed half of them. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I, I actually got four commitments from six people. Now, unfortunately, I didn't have my my closing process down perfectly with those folks. So I've got a couple that I'm still stringing along, trying to get them signed and signed up. They're committed, yeah. but they just haven't completed the, the paperwork and, you know, paid me the first invoice. And, you know, so we're working through those challenges, but I, you know, I, I'm sure I'll get there with those folks. It's just, yeah. if I'd have done it the way I'm doing it now, it would have been done already. You know, I'd already be running their ads. Yeah. But yeah. So that was the last several weeks. You know, I've just kind of, you know, looked at, all right, how many sales calls have I had? I mean, how many first initial calls, just intro calls have I had? And then how many demos have I had? And what's the, you know, I'm closing, you know, one out of three. So yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty good. It's just, yeah. I mean, it's just understanding where, where, where you need and then just filling in the numbers at that point. Um, Let's take a quick step back then. So when you started the sales challenge, you basically just started from slate zero, right? Like you yeah. were just like, awesome, let's start this brand new and let's just make it happen. Yeah. Well, I had, I had run some stuff before, like I was trying um, optical, dental, heating and air, plumbing, electrical. So I, yeah. <laughs> I'd, I'd reached out to, you know, hundreds of people across the country. And I was like, this is just, I got to stop and reset. And so, you know, with this, um, sales challenge, I built everything from scratch, you know, mm -hmm. new, new domain, new, um, prospecting, um, the, the prospecting email, I made sure I redid my uh, Facebook page for my profile, primed it for, um, personal injury specific type, you know, leads, same thing with my LinkedIn profile. And so I got all of those prospecting engines running, and, you know, so now people come in from all different directions, but you, know, you just have to be consistent with it. So a hundred percent, that's a big one that <laughs> almost, I mean, even as big as you get, 
consistency is what is going to make up 90% of your success. And some, some folks just don't get that. Some folks, it takes a long time for them to, to have that click. But, yeah. um, so, okay. So you basically started from slate zero start of the sales challenge. It's been four months, give or take a little bit right now. Um, so I mean, where, where, where are you at right now? If you're willing to share, uh, in terms of clients and things like that. Well, I've got nine, um, nine clients. Um, I started this little trial thing for some clients. So I've got a couple in that trials, you know, this, I haven't paid, you know, the full month or whatever, but, um, yeah, I mean, I'm making, and I'm doing other stuff for some of these guys too. So, but just Facebook marketing, um, I'm only charging $1,500 a month for what I'm doing for these guys, which I probably can start charging a little bit more as my confidence grows and the ability and stuff. Um, and asking for money. That's a, you know, another thing is, is I, I just used to asking for money. Um, but, but anyway, um, that's, uh, you know, that that's where I'm at. Nine customers, nine clients. Um, and, you know, inevitably one's going to drop off cause it's not going to work out for them, but you know, with every one that drops off, hopefully I can replace them with three or four. hundred percent. hundred percent. Yeah. We, we got to work on, on getting your ads up and running. You got to get All you right. pulling in way more than that. But uh, that's, uh, that's absolutely phenomenal. Um, and uh, so, I mean, with that, it's, I mean, funny, enough, like it, it is like a lot of the folks I've talked to in the last little bit, um, it's the same, same type of process. Like you, you kind of got into it, you had some success with the clients and then you kind of wipe the slate clean and we're like, okay, this way is not going to scale, but this way is, uh, yeah. and then you kind of restarted with it. Um I mean, out of all of that, what, what's kind of like the biggest piece of advice you'd have for either, and we'll kind of look at it two ways. One, someone who's new to setting up their, their agency first time, what would be like the big piece of advice for them? And secondarily for the person who's in an agency who may be in, maybe taking that side of like, well, you know, I serve roofers and solar folks and, <laughs> you know, HVAC and, and all that. And I mean, what would be the big piece of advice for them uh, to get them refined from maybe one or two clients up to, you know, getting to nine, 10 clients? Yeah. Yeah. So my, all right. So on the first side, it, it's, it's um, all right. So this is Eric Haskin philosophy. We're, we're, we are inherently aiming creatures, right? That's why we have eyes because we can aim at something. And so, you know, physically just, I can go in a direction. But that allows us mentally, because we have that ability to think and reason, to set a plan and a goal for a long-term structure, right? So I'd say mindset is kind of number one thing. Set a goal. What do you want to achieve? $20,000 a month. Okay, great. How are you going to do that? Right? And then you break that down to the, the steps it's going to take to get you there. And niching down to a niche is, is key because you're going to do and you're going to copy that same thing across every client, right? Even though the, the outline's the same for different niches, it's not the, the, the marketing, the copy you put, the, the creative you use, the, the follow-up systems, the funnel, it's all different, right? So just niche down and make it easy on yourself. Pick the right niche, right? So look at the niches where you can actually scale. Somebody that's got 50 or 60,000 um, people in that market, right? So personal injury attorneys or roofers, they're going to be, you know, HVAC, there's a hundred thousand of those or more in the United States. So, um, and they're not all created equal. And some of them are really big companies and some of them are small, but most of them that are well or decently run can afford what we provide and we'll love it. 100%. Right. Just got to work with the right people. Um, all right. So, that was part of the answer, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's good. That's good. Um, yeah, I mean, I, honestly, that's uh, absolutely phenomenal. Uh, absolutely phenomenal advice. And it, I mean, it really is. It's it. It really falls along the side, uh, alongside the same pattern that I've uh, I've seen with uh, some other folks I've talked to who have gone and kind of restarted from you know a clear slate. It is just the focus, the mindset, and you know, making, making it easy for yourself. It really is. If you're working in one market. And commit, commit to 60 days, you know, do that stuff every day. So if, 
if you want to be better at something, you have to do something different than you did yesterday. And it doesn't have to be a huge gap. And, you know, it can be just a little bit better than I did yesterday, a little bit more, a little bit more. And in two months, three months, you'll be that much further in, in ahead. Right. So it's just, 100%. it's just being taking those steps daily. hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. I love that. Um, awesome. Uh, I mean, that's, that's all the questions I have for you. I mean, is there anything you want to leave folks with, uh, you know, advice or otherwise, and, uh, and then we'll wrap it up from there. Uh, honestly, that, you know, at the end of the day, it, I think I hit it. It's, it's being consistent, but, um, the, the other thing that, that I could say is, um, the reason why you start with mindset and all these different, um, trainings is because that's, that's, what's going to drive you to make the next decision. So set that goal, that big, hairy, audacious goal that you want to get to. And then once you achieve it, set another one. And while you're on the path, you're going to learn stuff. And so your goal is going to shift because your direction is going to shift a little bit, but you know, don't sweat it. Just, you know, put that goal out there and then constantly reevaluate your, where you are and where you're going. And that's how I got, you know, I, now I know that it takes me, you know, three conversations to have one win because I've looked at my numbers, right. And mm -hmm. done a kind of a, a hindsight and said, where am I, what am I doing and what is my go forward plan? So I'd say, you know, look at that. And if here, here's a plug for you. If, um, if you want to really achieve something, be a part of the lab <laughs> because that's daily actions, you know? And so that's, you know, there you go. <laughs> Appreciate that. Uh, yeah, that was hundred percent unsolicited, but yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll leave some details below on that, but also, uh, you know, if, if you're, if you're an attorney, you want to work with, uh, with Eric, uh, I mean, we'll, we'll leave, we'll leave, uh, I guess an email or, or something that they can contact you with below as well. Uh, cause at the end of the day, he absolutely rocks it for personal injury attorneys. Um, but I appreciate you taking the time. This is absolutely phenomenal. And, uh, I really hope some folks take your advice cause it's, it's really all you need. It's, it, I mean, it's focus and, and a direction and I mean, you're going to get there, but, uh, sure. phenomenal. Thanks for having, uh, having the time and, uh, we'll, uh, we'll see you on the flip side. All right. Thanks, Jamil.